Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, written by Al Lewis. Well, as some of you may remember, last night was New Year's Eve. Well, like everyone else, Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, had looked forward to celebrating with considerable anticipation. But as the poet Robert Burns put it, the best laid plans of mice and men gang after glay. I don't know about the men, but I'm certainly one of the mice Robbie had in mind because last night somebody really ganged up on my glay. <laughs> Everything started off normally enough Saturday morning as I joined my landlady at the breakfast table. Here, Connie, here's some tomato juice. It'll do you good, dear. What is this, a down payment on tomorrow morning? <laughs> oh, you won't need any tomorrow. Not if you come to my party tonight. What kind of a party are you having, Mrs. Davis? Very quiet, Connie. I've just asked some of the neighbors in to listen to the radio and maybe dance a bit. It'll be a nice, relaxed evening. Of course, I am having some help with the refreshments. Who's helping you? Barney, the bartender from Mulligan's Saloon. <laughs> that should lead to a very relaxed evening, earlier than you think. <laughs> Oh, he's not going to serve any whiskey. You see, ever since he's been working for Mr. Mulligan, Barney's insistent on having New Year's Eve off. Why is that? He can't stand drunks. <laughs> Barney likes nothing better than to drop over here and make us a little friendly bowl of punch. If I remember correctly, Connie, you sampled some of Barney's punch last year. I almost did, Mrs. Davis. Somebody jostled me as I was about to drink some, and I spilled it on my black evening gown. I don't remember that at all, Connie. I do. It started a run in my dress. <laughs> oh, you're exaggerating, dear. It was a very mild mixture. Why, we even dipped lady fingers into the punch bowl after a while. I know. And a little while after that, the lady fingers were diving into the bowl. <laughs> oh, I'm just teasing you, Mrs. Davis. I'd like nothing better than to share a little punch with you tonight, but I probably have a date with Mr. Boynton. Probably. Hasn't he asked you yet, Connie? Oh, you know, Mr. Boynton. It takes him a week to get enough courage to speak up. You'd think he'd know where he stands by now. I've dropped him enough hints, heaven knows. Hints? Just yesterday, I told him I thought there was nothing quite as exciting as the scent of an orchid and the popping of champagne corks. Do you think it'll work, Connie? Indubitably, Mrs. Davis. He'll probably take me into a florist shop and let me smell an orchid while he cracks his knuckles. <laughs> Mr. Boynton isn't the biggest spender in the world, is he, Connie? No, I think there's a Maharaja in India who spends eight or nine dollars a week more. <laughs> but after all, Mr. Boynton is a school teacher, and he probably just can't... Now, who can that be? Come on in, it's not locked. Finished with your cereal, Connie? Yes, thanks. Oh, good morning, Miss Brooks, Mrs. Davis. Hello, Mr. Boynton. Now, isn't that a coincidence, Mr. Boynton? I was just going to clear away the table and clear out. What's coincidental about that? Now she's got a good reason to. <laughs> exactly. See you later, folks. Take your time, dear. Well, Mr. Boynton, this is rather a surprise visit. Well, yes, Miss Brooks, I, I guess it is. Want a cup of coffee? All right. Keeps pretty hot in this percolator. There you are. Thank you. Well, that was fun. What'll we do now? <laughs> Tonight, as you know, is New Year's Eve, Miss Brooks. Yes, I know. It's the one night in the year I believe in celebrating. You see, the only fun a bachelor can have, especially a bachelor school teacher, is to really let go once in a while. Might also be fun to hold on once in a while. <laughs> Don't look so shocked. I'll withdraw the statement. Strike that from the record, clerk. <laughs> The one thing I'm so grateful for, Miss Brooks, is that our relationship has always been completely honest and above board. I can talk to you straight from the shoulder. You certainly can, Mr. Boynton. I, I don't have to beat around the bush. No, you don't. I can come right to the point without stalling. I hear you talking. <laughs> I, uh, I don't have to mask my real intentions with a lot of pseudo-diplomacy. Never no pseudo-diplomacy. Well, what I'm trying to say, Miss Brooks, is that, well... 
Several weeks ago, I, I promised to attend a biologist club New Year's Eve party at the club jamboree tonight. Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun, Mr. Boynton. Oh, I, I'm sure it will be. But the ticket cost $5, Miss Brooks, and, well, I, I only had enough for the one when I bought it. And, well, well since then, I, I've had some unexpected holiday expenses and just haven't been able to afford another one. Of course, I, I'd love to ask you to join me tonight, but I couldn't very well invite you to pay for your own ticket, could I? You could, but I couldn't. <laughs> Pay for it, I mean. I've had some holiday expenses of my own, Mr. Boynton. Two whole weeks of eating. Well, I, I'm terribly, ser- terribly sorry we won't be together, Miss Brooks. As a matter of fact, I, I suspected you were just as broke as I am. That's why I came over to see you now. What do you mean, Mr. Boynton? Happy New Year, Miss Brooks. Same to you, Mr. Boynton. And thank you for a lovely morning. <laughs> That's all right, Miss Brooks. Now let's sing two choruses of Old Lang Syne, and this will be the earliest I've ever folded on New Year's Eve. <laughs> Please don't be annoyed, Miss Brooks. I'll be thinking about you tonight from the minute I sit down in that nightclub and pick up my noisemaker. Well, thanks, Mr. Boyle. <laughs> I'll be thinking of you, too, tonight, as soon as I sit down by the window and blow my tin horn. <laughs> I guess I'd better be running along now. Get cleaned up for the big night. Yes, you do that, Mr. Boyne. I've got to help Mrs. Davis with the dishes. Forgive me if I don't chase you, uh, walk you to the door. <laughs> Certainly. Well, see you next year, like they say. Don't take any wooden biologists. <laughs> now, that's just dandy. What's just dandy, Connie? Oh, where'd Mr. Boynton go? Home to rest. Oh, we've got a big night ahead of us, eh? We've got a big night ahead of him. Mr. Boynton is going to the biologist party alone, Mrs. Davis. Alone? But why, Connie? He just can't afford to take me with him. The tickets are $5 a copy. Now, if I had $5, I could... Mrs. Davis. I'd be happy to, Connie. You would? Of course, but I haven't got a quarter. I spent my entire budget for this week on tonight's party. Oh, well, thanks just the same, Mrs. Davis. No sense in worrying about it, I guess. New Year's Eve is just another night. <laughs> Maybe that's Mr. Boynton again. I'll finish up in the kitchen, Connie. Come on in. The door is still open. Ah, oh, good morning, Miss Brooks. Mr. Conklin, what fortuitous circumstance brings Madison's esteemed principal to the humble abode of a lowly faculty member? You've seen your share of Charlie Chan movies, haven't you? <laughs> If you'll forgive me, Miss Brooks, I shall skirt the preliminaries and get right to the point. Firstly, Mrs. Conklin is visiting her sister who has a touch of rheumatism in Philadelphia. That's a bad place to get it. <laughs> Let's dispense with the fripperies, shall we? <laughs> Secondly, her sister has sent their little boy, age six, to spend the holidays with my daughter Harriet and myself. Thirdly, I have promised Harriet she can go to a New Year's Eve party tonight. And fourthly, I have a dinner engagement with some old professor friends of mine from state normal days. But I don't understand, Mr. Conklin. At this late date, it is almost impossible to secure a babysitter, Miss Brooks. Now I understand. (laughs) I'm sorry, Mr. Conklin, but I've been sitting with children for years now. I'm afraid I'm going to be busy tonight. Ah, what a pity. It would only be until 10 o'clock, and I was contemplating payment of... uh, Say, five dollars? I'd like to help you, Mr. Conklin, but it's really out of the question for me to... Did you say five (laughs) dollars? That is correct. Where and when? 7.30, my home. I'll be there, Mr. Conklin. Thank you, Miss Brooks. Thank you very much. Don't bother seeing me to the door. I know the way. Thank you, Mr. Conklin. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed. Mrs. Davis! Mrs. Davis! Yes, dear, what is it? Well, it's going to be a happy new year after all. I'm going to sit with Mr. Conklin's nephew until 10 o'clock, and he's going to give me $5. He must be quite a well-to-do little boy. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Conklin's going to give me the five. Don't you see, Mrs. Davis, now I can buy my own ticket to the club jamboree and see the old year out with Mr. Boynton after all. Uh. How nice for you, Connie. Oh, just one thing, Mrs. Davis. On our way to the club, may I stop by here to pick up some lady fingers? But doesn't the five dollars you pay include a midnight supper, Connie? Yes, it does, Mrs. Davis. Then what in the world do you want with lady fingers? We've got to have something to slip the waiter. <laughs> Sorry, 
starring Eve Arden will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Now, proof that brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Continuous research, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice research on tooth decay. Eminent dental authorities supervised hundreds of college men and women for over two years. One group always brushed their teeth with Colgate's right after eating. The other followed their usual dental care. The group using Colgate Dental Cream as directed using Colgate's exclusively, showed a startling reduction in average number of cavities, far less tooth decay. The other group developed new cavities at a much higher rate. No other dentifrice offers proof of these results. Modern research shows decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate's as directed helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Yes, Colgate's contains all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. So remember, always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Well, I phoned Mr. Boynton and asked him to meet me at Mr. Conklin's home at 10 that evening. At 9.30, I was still trying to get little Stevie into bed. Now listen, Stevie, it's getting awfully late. Just when do you propose to go to sleep? Well, soon as I get another glass of water. But I've given you three glasses of water in the last half hour. What do you do with them? I drank two and gave one to my animals. Uh, see, Uncle Osgood bought me these toys for Christmas. They're very nice. Now get into bed, please. Well, first tuck my lion in the bed. All right. There, your lion's in bed. Now my tiger. Okay, your tiger's in. Now put my black panther in. Right, the black panther's tucked in. Now I'll just tuck... Stevie, why aren't you getting into the bed? Who do you think I am, Clyde Beatty? <laughs> I wish I had a book on child psychology with me. A nice heavy one. <laughs> Come on now, shove that menagerie aside and get in. Okay. Hello? Is that you, Harriet? Your daughter's dressing for her date, Mr. Conklin, but thanks for the comparison. On the phone, all voices sound alike to me. Uh, how's my nephew, Miss Brooks? Fine, Mr. Conklin. He's in his zoo. I mean, in bed. <laughs> good, good. Has the dear little fellow floated off to dreamland yet? Not quite, but one more glass of water should do it. <laughs> uh, there hasn't been any change in plan, has there, Mr. Conklin? Oh, I know, Miss Brooks. Then I can expect you in about half an hour? I'm afraid it'll be considerably longer than a half hour, Miss Brooks. I'm staying over with some friends. But you said you'd be back at 10. That's right. I'll be back at 10 a.m. Oh, but Mr. Conklin... Awfully you can... nice of you to do this for <laughs> me, Miss Brooks. Good night and a happy Miss... new year to you. Oh, this is terrible. Harriet! Oh, Harriet! Yes, Miss Brooks? Your dad just called and told me he won't be home until tomorrow morning. I know. He's staying with some old friends of his. From normal. There's nothing normal about it. When I agreed to act as Stevie's sitter, I thought your father would be back at ten tonight. I have a date at that time with Mr. Boynton. Oh, that's a shame, Miss Brooks. Maybe I could call your dad back so we could make some other arrangement. Do you know where these friends of his live? No, I don't. But don't get panicky. We'll think of something as soon as I finish dressing. Oh, that must be Walter Denton. Will you let him in, please? I'll just be seconds finishing up. All right, Harriet. Coming. Miss Brooks, I want a glass of water. Quiet, Stevie. Darn kid. If it weren't for him, I could go. Take it easy. I'm coming. Happy, happy, happy New Year, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Come in, Walter. Isn't it a wonderful night to see the old year out on? Aren't you just in love with tonight, Miss Brooks? I'm crazy about it. <laughs> Harriet will be ready in a few minutes, Walter. Ah, dear Harriet. You know, that's what I like best about this holiday. The feeling of closeness it gives you to the one you care for. Especially during that one breathless, rapturous moment right before midnight. That moment... Like the hush of a giant wave, ere it pounds mightily upon the golden sands. That tongueless moment of promised ecstasy, culminating in a crescendo of clamorous, amorous bliss. 
Have you ever been hit with a six-year-old child? <laughs> Gosh, Miss Brooks, you don't seem very happy about New Year's. Haven't you got a date with Mr. Boynton? That's just the trouble, Walter. I have. But I also have a date to sit here with Mr. Conklin's nephew, Stevie, until Uncle returns in the morning. It was all a misunderstanding, mostly on my part. Gee, that's a tough break, Miss Brooks. Isn't there any way out for you? I... I know. Maybe you could hire a babysitter to sit in your place. Of course, it couldn't be just any ordinary person. It would have to be a very special kind of sitter to fill your shoes. You never were great in anatomy, were you, Walter? <laughs> but that wouldn't work either. Even if I had the money, which I haven't, it's too late to get anybody now. Well, here I am, Walter. How do I look? Devastating, Harriet. Absolutely soul-destroying. How do you think I look, Miss Brooks? Very atomic, Harriet. You should be the center of all eyes at your party. Gee, I kind of hate to go with you in this spot, Miss Brooks. Did you tell Walter about your dilemma? Yeah, she did, Harriet. But we can't seem to think of any way out. Oh, don't worry about me, kids. I'll just celebrate New Year's Eve some other night. Maybe when Mr. Boynton comes to pick you up, you could talk him into staying here with you instead of going to his old biologist club party. Yeah, there's a swell phonograph and some keen records you could dance to. Maybe I'll do that. In fact, I may do that even if Mr. Boynton doesn't stay. Miss Brooks, I want a glass of water. Excuse me, kids. I guess I didn't tuck him in tight enough. <laughs> I'll be right there, Stevie. You run along to your party and have a good time. You're certainly noble, Miss Brooks. I'm not noble. I'm stuck. <laughs> Go ahead now. It's almost 10 o'clock. Noble or stuck, you're solid, Miss Brooks. Thanks, Walter. Maybe Mr. Boynton will notice it and stick around a while. <laughs> I sure hope so. Me too. Have the best possible New Year's under the circumstances, Miss Brooks. I'll do my best. So long, kid. Hey, did Cousin Harriet go out with Walter Denton? Yes, Stevie, she did. He's an idiot. <laughs> He's very fond of you, too. <laughs> Here's your water. Oh, thanks. Hey, could I also have an ice cream cone? No, Stevie, no ice cream cones at this hour. With a pickle in it? <laughs> That's different. You've got to have your vitamins. <laughs> no, I'm just fooling. You've eaten quite enough for one night. Are there any pickles in the house? No, but I'd gladly let you have the one I'm in. <laughs> well, here's my glass. You better leave it near the pitcher. I might get hungry again. Mm hmm. Thirsty. <laughs> oh, that's Mr. Boynton. Now you put your little head down and dream you're a battleship. Okay. Good night, Miss Brooks. Good night, Stevie. I'll be right there. Oh, come in, Mr. Boynton. My, but you look handsome tonight. Oh, thanks, Miss Brooks. You, uh, you look quite handsome yourself. I'm glad to see you already. I'm just raring to go. Well, unrare yourself, Mr. Boynton. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't go with you tonight. Oh, but, but you said on the phone that Mr. Conklin will be back yes, and Yes, you... that was before he called me again. He won't be here until tomorrow morning. I can't leave Stevie alone. But I've been thinking, Mr. Boynton, we could have quite a nice time right here tonight. Here? You and me? And the phonograph. There are some fine records stacked over there by the sofa. But, Miss Brooks, we have no chaperone. Who has no chaperone? I'm here. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Brooks. I've already paid for my ticket, and the other members of the club expect me at the club jamboree. In fact, I promised I'd be there by 10.30. Well, it's only 10 now. You could stay for a little while. Here, sit down on the couch, Mr. Boynton. Well, I, I guess I could stay for about 10 minutes or so. Fine, we'll have a million laughs. laughs. Uh, do you like records, Mr. Boynton? Oh, yes, I do. Oh, say, here's quite a pile of them. Let's see what some of the titles are. That should be fun. Here's a batch for you. I'll go through these. Uh, uh, don't you think you're sitting rather close to me, Miss Brooks? I know I'm sitting close to you, Mr. Boynton. Well, I, I mean, I'm a little off balance. I don't want to break any records. Don't worry, you won't. <laughs> oh, say, here's a great old number. If I could be with you one hour tonight. I'm a lone cow hand. <laughs> Baby, it's cold outside. <laughs> Don't fence me in. <laughs> I'm in the mood for love. It's too late now. <laughs> I can dream, can't I? All right, Louie, drop the gun. 
anything I have is yours. <laughs> I got plenty of nothing. <laughs> Drink to me only with thine eyes. I want a glass of water. <laughs> Quiet, Stevie. You've had all the water you're going to get. Now go to sleep. Okay, okay. Don't get petulant. <laughs> maybe, maybe you should let him have it, Miss Brooks. I'd love to let him have it. <laughs> uh, he's had quite enough, Mr. Barnum. Oh, say, here's a beautiful number. The Bells of St. Mary's. Oh, that is beautiful. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Barnum. Oh, before you answer it, Miss Brooks, I'd like you to know... I, I've changed my mind. I just can't stand the thought of you spending New Year's Eve alone, so, well, I'll call my friends and tell them not to expect me. That is, if you still want me to stay here with if you. If I still want you, Mr. Boynton, don't move from that spot. Be right there. If I still want him, he says. Hi, <laughs> Josh, Miss Brooks. We just couldn't stand the thought of you spending New Year's Eve alone. Come on in, Walter. Oh, but uh, what about your friend's party, Harriet? We told them we weren't coming, Miss Brooks. Walter and I have decided to spend New Year's Eve right here with you. With me? But Mr. Boynton's here. And oh, then hello, he... Harriet, Walter. How, how are you both? Oh, fine, thanks, Mr. Boynton. Uh, we came back to help Miss Brooks celebrate the New Year. Well, good. The more the merrier. I'm staying here, too. Wonderful. We'll have our own party, the four of us. Won't that be just the end, Miss Brooks? It'll be the end of something. <laughs> I've certainly had a good time so far. So have I, drinking Cokes and playing records. Oh, it has been rather exciting at that. Don't you think so, Miss Brooks? Thrilling. <laughs> I can hardly wait until midnight. What are you going to do then? I'm going to crack open a brand new bottle of sweet air and spray the kitchen. <laughs> it's almost midnight now. Gee, I wish Daddy were here. That would be all I need. Turn the radio on, Walter. The Club Jamboree is broadcasting their New Year's Eve party. Oh, okay, Mr. Boynton. Poor Daddy's missing all the fun. He and those old professors of his probably played a few games of chess and went to bed about 11.30. Well, perhaps it's for the best, Harriet. Your father's a very high-strung man. Too much noise isn't good for him. Uh, I've got the station. Well, it's two minutes to midnight, folks, and here to give you the signal at the stroke of 12 is one of our most distinguished citizens and an honored guest of Club Jamboree. Here he is... Your friend and mine, happy-go-lucky, gag-a-minute, Osgood Conklin! Osgood Conklin? Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for that charming in introduction, Professor Young. That's him, all right. I have just time before the old year is dead to tell you lovely people that a funny thing happened to me on my way to the club tonight. A panhandler stopped me outside the door and said, Mister, I haven't had a bite all week. So I bit him. <laughs> oh, great. Madison's next principal will probably be Milton Berle. Now, when I give you the signal, let's get those noisemakers going and really let her rip. There are only five seconds to go. Four, three, two... I can't understand what got into Daddy tonight. Maybe it was some of Mrs. Davis's fruit punch. <laughs> Gosh, Harriet, your dad's entitled to have a little fun once in a while. After all, people are only human. Well, it is New Year's Eve. It sure is. And it's midnight, too, Harriet. You know what that means. I guess so, Walter. Well, come on, I'm all puckered. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, do you see the work that's going on in the next yard? <laughs> yes, I, I do, Miss Brooks. And although I must admit I'm a rather diffident person most of the time, I, I feel that this being New Year's Eve, I can take a certain liberty. 
Liberty, you can take shore leave. <laughs> well, I'm ready if you are. I'm puckered, Mr. Boynton. I'm thirsty, Miss Brooks. Oh. <laughs> well, that's done it. If you'll forgive me, Mr. Boynton, I'm going to pour three glasses of water. Three? But who are the extra two for? You and me. We might as well be loaded as the way we are. <laughs> Martin returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight. Show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives K. Dumit's magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Not a soap, not a liquid... Luster Cream Shampoo leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream Shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. Ladies and gentlemen, we take pride in announcing that the poll of newspaper and magazine radio editors taken by Motion Picture Daily for Fame magazine showed that Eve Arden, was voted the best radio comedian in 1949. Thank you. My sincere thanks to the radio editors, Motion Picture Daily, and Fame Magazine, and to every school teacher and pupil, as well as their parents and friends, a very happy New Year. Good night. <laughs> Next week, tune into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. M Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, and Jeff Silver. <laughs> Be beauty wise, get bath size palm olive soap for beauty care all over. Yes, for your tub or shower, enjoy the same glorious beauty lather that millions of women have found so wonderful in bringing lovelier complexions in just 14 days. Simply buy the big, thrifty, long lasting bath size palm olive. Use it for your palm olive soap facials. Enjoy its oceans of creamy, beautifying lather in your tub or shower. And say, men love it too. So let the whole family enjoy bath-size palm olive. Yes, be beauty-wise, get bath-size palm olive soap today. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.